Hey, the Fallen State is looking for interns. There's two requirements. You have to live in the LA area and you have to love the Fallen State. Click right here to apply. Welcome to the Father State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Today I'm speaking with someone who believes the Black Lives Matter movement is important to higher education. I'm talking with Dr. Luke Wood, a social scientist and a professor of education at San Diego State University. In our country today, black men and boys are in crisis. Would you agree to that? Absolutely. And why are they in crisis today? Well, we are in a society that is unfortunately under bedded by racism, and we are in educational institutions that, of course, are part of society. Where is the proof that is racism that's doing this? Well, there's a lot of proof, and it's not only racism. Racism is one factor among a, a litany of other factors, right. but, but racism is, is certainly evident in the experiences of students. We have students who are viewed as being academically inferior, uh, we have students who are viewed as being criminals and deviants by educators in the classroom, and oftentimes they view black boys very differently than they view, say, a white boys or Latino boys. And so there's certain ways that racial dynamics play out that help us to see that there are racial differences, and those racial differences tell us that there is racism taking place. And this is happening within the education system itself. Well, it's happening in society but it's also happening in education. I so, see. for example, with the class that I'm doing, it's called Black Minds Matter. Right. And what we're trying to do is raise the national consciousness about issues facing black boys and men in education. And what we're doing is we're identifying the fact that our educational system is not working. It has failed many of our students, particularly our students from the most disaffected communities. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is to radically transform our educational system and for educators to see their classrooms as sites for civil resistance through teaching that empowers students. And so it, let's say that within a classroom, at a university, in a, within a classroom, you have white boys in there, sitting there, you have black boys sitting there. Mm -hmm. And so are the white teachers looking at them and, and, and thinking or saying out loud, you're black, I know you're a criminal, uh, you're too dumb to be here. Are they thinking that or saying that? Okay, so some people <laughs> will think that and even say that, but the vast majority of educators aren't bad people who wanna go out and do horrible things. They're well-meaning, well-intentioned people who unfortunately, because we live in a society that is influenced by our history, they engage them in different ways. Really? So for example, let's say that you're a black male student. We hear this a lot in the research that we do. You're in the library, you're studying, and they come by and everyone is, and no one has asked for their ID, but they walk up to you and ask you for your ID, assuming that you may not be there because your student, maybe you're there to steal something, right? From the library? From the library. This That's happens a lot. They're not gonna steal from the library, everybody knows that. Well, hopefully they'll steal a book <laughs> if they're gonna steal something, right. but these things happen on our campuses. How do you know that that happens, that a black person can be sitting in a library and someone comes up and asks for ID that they're going to think it's because you're stealing? Because we do research on this. This is what and I've committed my life to. So what I do in my work is I interview black males who are in, particularly in community colleges. I interview teachers and, and professors. I do survey work on college campuses. And what we try to do is to help people understand these issues so that they can then move past them. And what we see is that our campuses are rife with unconscious bias and what we call microaggressions. So kind of subtle ways that we communicate to one another that one group is lesser than another. That's amazing. And so are the teachers in, doing the survey, 
uh, the white teachers admitting, yes, I asked for an ID because he was black. So and I thought he was going to steal something. So with our survey work, we primarily focus on on students and have student and students are responding that this is, oh. these are the things that happen to them. But I will say that I've had many teachers as part of our training say, you know, this is something that I've done, and you know, I didn't mean to do it. I recognize that you know I, I've grown up thinking about them in certain ways, and unfortunately, these things play out. And it actually goes back to me to the whole title of your show, which is The Fallen State, right? right? I mean, what is this show about? I mean, what does fallen state mean? Right? Well, you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Absolutely. And what does it mean to be in a fallen state? Let's go to the Bible, right? I'm a Christian, you're a Christian. Let's go back to the Bible. So in the very beginning, right, we see Adam and Eve in the garden, right? right. And we see them in perfect harmony with God, with nature, and with one another. And the, the snake says to, to Eve, you will be like God, right? It's this notion of wanting to be better. Then we go, next, next uh, story is about Cain and Abel. Cain wanted to be better than Abel, so what did he do? He killed Abel, right? So we see from the very beginning in, in history that there's this unique desire and that's embedded within us to want to be better than one another. And in our society, the way that that plays out is through racism. That was something called the talented tenth. Mm -hmm. where the black educators wanted to be better than the blacks who were not educated. W.D. Du Bois and yep. all those guys, yep. they wanted to tell blacks how to think, what to do, when to do it, and blah, blah, blah. Were those elitist blacks being racist against those blacks who were not educated? They weren't being racist, but they did have a desire to be better than one another. Right, and we should never desire to be better than one another. We should desire for our own improvement. Right, right. But our our goal should not to be that. Hey, I see other people, and I want to be better than them. But my thing is, blacks do it to each other too. You have the light skinned black, mm -hmm. who the dark skinned black will hate, be, and so they would discriminate against the light skinned black. So was that racist? I think that was an example with of of self hatred. But that not is, racist. It is informed by racism, but it's self-hatred. But not racist. It is informed by racism and it's self-hatred. What does that mean, informed by racism? So because we live in a society that prioritizes whiteness, right, and white <laughs> ideology and white people, right, we have a society that says this is what you should be. And so for some people, unfortunately, they can look at that and say, that hey, if you want to to rise in this society, I should also ascribe to those same kind of values. And so you can see, because of this racism that undergirds our society, that some people will unfortunately tacitly buy into those ideas. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. And now, a word from our sponsor. I am so excited. I can't believe it. Finally, the Fall Estate merchandise is here. Look at this beautiful shirt. We have red, white, and black. Comfortable, I like to fit. Really nice t-shirts. And we have mugs. The Fall Estate mug. On the back it says, did you have fun? <laughs> did you have fun? A gift. Excellent gifts, both. This is a great way for you to help us. Can you imagine your friends seeing you with this at the office, at the park, in your home? You're going to love it. Order them now. Go to thefallenstate.tv. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You describe yourself as an advocate for boys and men of color. Exactly what do you mean by that? So as an advocate, what I want to do is to see our boys and men of color, particularly our black boys and men, become more successful in education. In the high schools and junior high schools around the country now, especially in the urban areas, yeah. they are bringing in things like homosexuality and uh, they are promoting illegal aliens in the public schools, uh, in return pushing the black kids out. Are you trying to prevent that from happening to the black boys? in the schools. My work focuses on better preparing teachers to teach black boys and men. And what I focus on are strategies, tangible strategies that they can use in their classroom to better improve their success. Right. Right? And but so- But to keep those things out, wouldn't that better improve 
uh, an environment so that the black boys can be taught in the proper way? The vast majority of teachers are white and women, right? And some of them are a absolutely amazing. So this is not to disparage white women, right? But if we think about that, that means that the black boy who's in the classroom is most likely not going to see a teacher who ever, ever looks like him. And that white teacher will be teaching someone who is very different from her. So I just did um, a presentation as part of my course, Black Minds Matter, where I talked about this question that's part of a federal government survey. And what we find is that when the focal child is a black boy in comparison to a white boy, in kindergarten, he's 60% more likely to be viewed as incapable of learning. That's at the earliest levels of education. I think that's where we should be putting our emphasis is uh, how do we change those perceptions that teachers have. So is that because uh, the white teachers are perceiving them as being incapable of learning or something else? It's because the white teachers are perceiving them really? as being incapable of learning. And, and, it, and it deals with this concept of what we call, it's, it's called ascription of intelligence, right? Where we ascribe certain groups to be academically inferior based upon how we've been taught to believe them. I mean, what you see on television, I mean, if you think about it, think about the popular depictions, unfortunately, of black men on television. They're rappers, they're athletes, they're entertainers, they're gangsters, but rarely do you see a, a black man on television who is a doctor or a lawyer well, not or doing, right? Well, no, it's still, no, it's all still over that. TV now, it's that. still that pattern, though. Matter of fact, I'm so sick of seeing it that way. I want to see the rappers in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back to the question, though. If you know, being an advocate for black boy men yeah. and boys, wouldn't you want to take out the homosexuals? You know, the teaching of homosexuality, abortion, and all that, so that the black boys can have a better environment to learn. I want to focus on the real but issues that are at hand. Me, you're not telling me yes or no. I'm not telling you yes or no because I think it's a sidestep from the real issues. I you mean, don't think we, that we is can, an I mean, issue? it's like it's basically saying, okay, we're talking over here about these real issues that are facing our community. But that is and let me real. throw out something over here. I mean, how come then we're not talking about the influence of Trump? But we're talking but let me about ask, you want to create a whole environment, a good environment for the black boys to learn, right? We want to create an environment where they are loved. Right. And so, can and I so give you an example of what you that took looks like? Out, if you took out the illegal aliens, you took out the teaching of abortion and the teaching of homosexuality, wouldn't that create or help to create a good environment? So, are you talking about taking those things out of curriculum to don't create space? Them, yeah. Okay. Don't, yeah, don't teach that. Teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. Don't allow the illegal aliens to overcrowd the classrooms so that the so, black kids don't so, feel pushed so out. So undocumented students are not, I don't view them as illegal aliens. I view them as individuals who've come to our country for a better opportunity. Did they come I mean, through the front door or the back? Do they come through the front door or the back? Well, for many of them, this is their land long before it was ours. No, the ones that are coming, did they come through the front door or the back? Well their country did have this land long before we did. Did they come through the front door or the back? Oh, actually they came through San Diego. <laughs> Is that the back door? I think that's the front door. So when someone come in through the back door, uh, is that breaking the law? I think that people get to this country in many different ways. No, I think, when think they about come our people, the, we were brought here on slave ships. Not me, I was born here. Really? But let me ask. <laughs> You were, they, you were born here? Your, your parents were born here? Yes. Your grandparents were born here? Yes. Their great-grandparents were born here? Yes. And the people long, long, long down the line were all born here? what happened after that. <laughs> but let me ask, if they come through the yeah. back door, are they breaking the law? Are they breaking the law? To come in a, across the borders illegally, are they breaking the law? Well, that assumes that you believe that the law is always a good thing. No. So I'm, no, no, I'm going to answer your question very directly. I'm going to answer very directly. Are they breaking the law? I would agree that there is a violation of law that is taking place. However, I don't always believe that law is a good thing. And I think there's a lot of examples in our history. We hey, had misogynation hey, hey, laws that, that says that black Are people couldn't marry the, white people. No. We had laws that says that me and you had to drink at a different drinking fountain than your colleague over here. So we had laws back. that put us in chains. Right, and they said that if we escape, I'm not they asking could about those laws. Are they breaking the law to come across the borders illegally? 
based upon the current law that's in place and the national law, they, there is a violation, yes, that is taking place. I'm sorry? I said, yes, there is a violation that is taking place. So they are breaking the law? Yes, oh, okay. there, is a, there is a law that is being broken, okay. but again, laws aren't necessarily moral. You create a... Jesus was a immigrant, was he not? I have they no fled, idea they, what they, He fled to Egypt, right? His family fled to Egypt. You created a free online public course called Black Minds Matter. Yes. And it's a focus on black boys and men and education, as we said. What is a black mind? Black mind is a black learner, a black student. Oh, I see. Yes. But the mind itself is not black. Oh, I see where you're going. That's, that's nice. So a black person, their, is, their life would be a black life. A black person, their mind would be a black mind. Why not just say mind and not black mind? Because you, when you well, say that, because we're to, focusing on a group that's when you not say that though well. to black boys, they right away they're going to think that their mind is different than the white person's mind. They're going to think of themselves as a black person with a mind rather than just having a mind. Well, hopefully they'll when they hear the the word or name or phrase black minds, they have a, a sense of a, a power that comes from that because. Black people are the originators of many of the greatest knowledge that we have around this world. Really? Yeah. Like what think point? about mathematics. Think about, um, think about uh, medicine, right? What about, it? are you saying that blacks created mathematics? I'm saying that blacks are the originator of many mathematical concepts, of many advances like in medicine. Like what for an example? If you other look, than Dr. Carson, there is no other black in medicine. There's no other black. No, I'm kidding about okay. that. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, um, and but, I think, doc, and I think Dr. Carson, I think, I think for a long period of time was viewed as a hero for much of the work that he had done. And he still and I, is. And I think he is still viewed in, in, as a hero in the context of his, of his brain, the brain surgery and the developments that he had. But I also think that he's become a hill in our community, unfortunately, because his ideology is far outside what would be considered the mainstream. That's amazing. It's sad that he's gone that direction. <laughs> is it wrong to judge? Yes, absolutely. So are the blacks wrong for judging Dr. Carson? No, they have, they, have dis they, have, they're making, they have discernment about the statements that he is Blacks don't have discernment. Really? I can think of many things that black people have. Discernment is not one of them. <laughs> okay, so what are the, some of the positive things we have? Uh, you said they can think of many things that we have. What are, what are they? Uh, I can't think of any. You can't think of any? And the a reason, president. The we did reason, have a president. The reason I can't think because most black people are so destructive and angry and they have been used for to destroy rather than to build. So they have not set a... a, a a big example of being good with or about anything. Have you noticed that? I don't see black people, our people, as being angry. I see us as having righteous indignation and viewing societal ills and wanting to change them. Amazing. I think there's a big difference between anger and, and righteous indignation, don't you? What, what, give me an example of righteous indignation that black I'm, people so, hold. Well, I'm going to give you an example of righteous indignation, and then I'll give you an example of what that looks like for black people. An example of righteous indignation is when Jesus went into the temple, and he saw the people in there selling items, right, trying to make money off of God. And what did he do? He went through and he kicked them out. So for example, I think my class is an example of that. We had, have over 10,000 people who are registered for a course about educating black people. We have over 260 broadcast sites throughout our country. So that's an example of taking and seeing a societal ill and having righteous indignation, a desire, a burning desire to change it and to create a better world. <laughs> Y'all is here. <laughs> yes,
what my name is again. <laughs> Ms. Cox, how do you feel about this situation? Which is most important to black Americans? Which would you say would be most important to them? To become men and women of value and of character or to get a good education? I, th I don't see those things as being separated. I think but we they can are, though. Which one is more important to you for them? My hope is that people will be able to have an education that can transform their lives. So is having an education more important than having values, it's godly the, values? I think it's about having both. And no, I think which that is it, most important? I think it's about having, so first of all, as a Christian, I believe that having godly values is the most important thing that we can have. And I believe that so education push that? is the pathway into that. Education is the pathway into godly values? Yeah, that's why people that, go to seminary, well, right? They go to that, seminary to become a pastor, right? They, they have to being, learn. They end up being dummies and immoral. Who does? Those people that go to those seminaries. <laughs> so pastors are immoral? Those that go to those seminaries, most of them end up being immoral men and women now. Well, I would say they're, they're, they're you can, they are human beings. How will you beings. develop character, godly values by going to a school? To any kind of school. I, well, so first of all, how I, do you develop godly values by going to whether it's a preacher school or or secular school? How do you develop godly values by doing that? By being exposed to societal ills, things that are not what they should be, and being given the language and power to change them. That's not how you develop values. Yes, it is. Not godly values. Oh, I disagree. Amazing. Where do you, where do you, want, do, where do you believe the godly values are developed then? From God within you. Okay, but, where, but who tells you about those values? God does. God does? Yes. God, okay, so God talks to us only directly, or we don't learn, do you read the Bible? Matter of fact, you have a better chance of developing godly values by not reading the Bible than you do by reading the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you get intellectual knowledge about good and can never develop them. But when you don't read the Bible, you're more likely to look for God within you and then live by those, those values and develop them as you're living. Absolutely. But I, I want to move on. I hear that you support Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. You support Black Lives Matter. Yeah, they and do matter. And you are a Christian. Absolutely. Black Lives Matter is an organization that is built by black lesbians like uh, Patrice Cullors and You black, know she was a, a and, guest in our class. And black homosexuals and radical uh, white social justice warriors. And they were chanting, what do you want, dead cops? When do you want it now? Peace in the blanket, from like bacon. Yeah. And when they did that, other blacks went out and started killing white cops and others. And you're for all that. <laughs> so first of all, I think that's a wide reaching encapsulation of what Black Lives Matter but stands true. for. It is not true. But right, everything let, I just let, said. You can allow me to respond to the question? Everything I just said happened, right? So you people, you're right. People did go to protests. And it is and followed they did. by a bunch of black lesbians. Wait, can I? Don't you just love that word? What? Lesbians. I love the word black. Yeah, but why would and you support? we come in all different types. Why would you support, as a Christian man, as a professor. Homosexual. Listen. What? Why would you support an organization like that and you want to help the black mind and you are a Christian, why would you support a radical, evil, agitative group like Black Lives Matter? Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Oscar Grant III, Alfred Olongo in San Diego, black men who were shot and killed by police officers, yet you call the people who want to fight against that the terrorists? Right. Who's committing terror? The Black Lives Matter and the thugs yeah. that were killed. All those people were thugs you just named. Tamir Rice was a thug. Thug. He a was young, a young kid. Well, he was young and stupid in that he had a BB gun. And did you never taken, have a gun growing up? Had, I did. I had BB guns growing up. He had taken up. the tip off, the little orange tip off the gun, uh -huh. which indicates that it is a BB gun. And then so other people saw him mm -hmm. in the park with a gun. Okay. And they called the cops. The cop got there. The guy going for the gun, they didn't know it was a BB gun because he had taken the tip off. You can't blame the cops for that, can you? So he deserved to die. You can't blame the cops Did that he Did he deserve to die? 
I don't know. He brought it up on himself. That's for sure. Okay. Did Alfred Alongo deserve well, to die? Well, let's go back to to Mir. He brought that up on himself by removing the orange tip. Would you agree to that? I would say this. Would you I would say that? that a child, which is oh, what he was. He was a, a big child. He was a child. He was bigger than you. He was bigger than me. Right. Does that matter at all? No. It doesn't matter. You have a, a child who was killed not a by child. a police officer. You make him look like some little innocent boy tiptoeing through the tulips. So Michael did he deserve Brown, to die? He brought him on himself. See, I, I totally disagree. Okay. Let me ask Michael Did all Brown. of them, all these people bring it upon themselves? My, yes. Michael Brown. Wow. Let's go with Michael Brown. Was he a child too? Michael Brown was a young adult. Well, was he a child? No. Was he a thug? I would say that Michael Brown made some decisions that I don't agree with, but he did not deserve to was die. Was he a thug? I'm not going to say that he was a thug, no. Amazing. Had he not uh, attacked the cop? Oh, uh, I don't think he is. Would he the still be I alive? I totally disagree with that statement. You don't agree with that? Even though you saw it happening, you don't believe it? Agree I don't it. believe that he attacked Did he cop. rob a store? I don't know what the evidence says on that because I don't know enough it? about that specific case. Amazing. What but kind I of could, Christian are you? What kind of Christian am I? Yeah. I, I'm a, I love Jesus. Where's the proof? Where's the proof? A man that loved Jesus is an honest man. I am an honest man. Uh, we're Very not being honest, honest about this. <laughs> You're, no, because you're asking me to talk about a case and go down to specifics of each But you brought case. them up. I didn't. Okay. I brought them up, and then I asked you specifically about Alfred Alongo, and then you switched over to Michael Brown. And I know why you switched to Michael Which Brown. Which one was Alfred? Alfred Alongo was in San Diego. It's so many of these stupid things, I don't even remember. I know. It's too many of us are dying. Because and it's, it's And you know what? No, because there's a war on black Not men true. in our society. By and that same people. war that happens in the streets happens in the classroom every single day. For every single that Tamir so and true. Eric and Trayvon in the street, there's a Tamir and Eric and Trayvon in our classrooms who are treated in very similar ways by educators, well-meaning educators, but white educators, educators. Many of them are white, but some of them look like us. Oh, black people treat them that way as well? Yeah, we're all, again, we're all, we're all socialized in this society to perceive that cer certain people are lesser than others. And they do it, according to you, they're doing this, the black teachers are doing this because they are influenced by white people to treat other black kids the same way as whites are treated. I them. would not say they're influenced by white people, they're influenced by whiteness. What does that mean? Whiteness <laughs> is an ideology, it's a culture, it's a value system. And what we need to do is we need to eliminate that value system. You want to eliminate whiteness? Whiteness, not white people, whiteness. But how do you eliminate whiteness without eliminating white people? What I want to do is to create an environment that is more collective, that is more value driven, that communicates love to our children. So are you and I think that, that that flies in absolute oppositeness with whiteness. Are you whiteness. saying that white people are evil? No. They're not, not at all. evil? Not at all. But then if they're not evil, why would they treat another human being? In this manner, because we all to a go, point that a man to like sin. you, all fallen. Want, uh, to a point that a man like you would want to eliminate whiteness. We are all fallen people. What can I do? I'm a meaningless statistic. There could just be a way I could help the fallen state. <laughs> I'm not crazy. That's never gonna happen. I'm not living in a dream world. <sighs> well, what's the matter with you? Jesse? Jesse Lee Peterson? You're my favorite YouTuber, and I wish there was a way for me as the viewer to support you. You can help us, and you can too. Whatever amount you can afford, even a dollar, we appreciate it. Go to patreon.com slash the fallen state. That's amazing. You're involved in something called the Community College Equity Assessment Lab. Yes. Right? And what is that exactly? What is that you do? So we partner with community colleges across the country to identify factors that influence success for black, Latino, Southeast Asian, Native American, and Pacific Islander students. And you leave the whites out? No, we look at whites in part of our work too. We look at low income whites. In particular, we do a lot of work on what's called food and housing insecurity, which is really like students who are going to school who don't know necessarily where they're going to sleep or what, what they're going to eat. And what, I was one of those students. What is equity? Well, first of all, let me tell you what equality is. And then I'll tell you what equity is. So equality is everybody gets the same, 
right? That's equality. Equity is that's saying like, that certain that's groups. It's like socialism. That everybody gets the same? Yeah. Okay, well. Um, is that I, the same as socialism? Well, I, it, it's certainly there's some elements of it, but, let, but I don't, I'm not, as ac- I, I'm I'm not advocating here. for that, though. I'm a dummy here, but is that the same as socialism? Okay, but I don't. I'm asking. I, I said it's a principle of it. Of socialism? Sure. Why not? Are you a socialist? Am I a social? So, so let me finish the statement. You asked what the title equity meant. Right. I'll come equity back to means that, but that are basically. Are you a socialist? No. You're not a socialist? No. Do you support socialism? I support the idea that certain people shouldn't have more to. There should be a relative degree to which people have more than others. You know, I let think, me tell you this. Right. I grew up in a family that, uh, uh, that we had nine kids in our family, right? Oh, that's beautiful. And we had time to eat or whatever. You know, you get your food. And whenever we say, well, Daddy or Mommy, my brother has more than I have. Or why do I have such, you know, such little plate here? They're like, boy, shut up. Go sit down. They didn't say, okay, Johnny, come back over so Jesse can get exactly what you have. What is equity? So equity is recognizing that LBG. certain groups have less than others and different experience than others. And so sometimes they need a little bit more to get to the next level. Give me an example how do you do something like that. Easy. Let's say that you're in a classroom and that you're a teacher and you have, say, 30 kids in your class, but you know that five of them aren't as prepared when they came in. Maybe it's not their fault. Maybe it's something that was, you know, the prior teacher they had the year before wasn't, just wasn't as good. Equity would be giving those students a few extra minutes every day than you do with some of the other students to get them to that point where they need to be. Amazing. You know what they did for kids like that in the good old days? What's that? When boys were boys and men were men. Okay. Well, good they, old days. I, I think that's totally a, a very funny thing to say. What was good about the good old they, days? They didn't, I don't pass, know. they didn't pass them on to the next grade oh, okay. until they got what they needed to get in the grade that they were in. Yeah. They didn't hold the other kids back. They didn't waste their time you know, on this person. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we need to go back to. Yeah, except, I, in, yeah, except in the good old days, right? You didn't have to necessarily graduate from school to be able to get a good job. You could go work at the mill. You could go work at the shop. If we got away from socialism, we can do that again in this country. Uh, but let me ask you this. Should a teacher use a different strategy uh, in teaching minority students than they do with white students? Yes. The curriculum has been designed for students who do not look like them for students who do not talk like them, for students who do not come from communities that they come from. And so what we need to do is to radically transform our classrooms into sites for civil resistance. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Through an education that empowers students, by telling students messages that encourage them, rather than learning about the history of some other group, we should be able to learn about our own history. Each and every day. How long is a decimeter? That's a half a hand. Two decimeters make a whole hand. And a centimeter, my nail made. Look, look. Come on, brag to me. Look, look. This is what I said. Break it down and show me how you choose for these other measures. How do you choose for these other measures? Like the leader. Come on, that's a cold fire. Not two liters, but one liter. And a milliliter. And a half So, what is the root? cause of the problems in the black community. It's this superiority, this notion of sin that creates different opportunities for different people. Superiority, what do you mean? Supremacy, white supremacy. Really? Yeah. So you, but you're white. Why, what makes you say that? Because your mother's white. No, my mother's not white. Your, your father's white. Yes, my, fa- my biological father so is like white. So you're all the way white then. I do not identify as white. I identify as African American. Why? Why? Why would you take the lower dummies and go that route rather than going with the smart people? <laughs> I went with the. I went with what I my experience is, and I would say that African Americans are the most brilliant people, and I'm proud to be African American. What's brilliant about spending generations and generations and generations uh, pointing your finger at the white man, while your life and your community, your family fall apart? 
what you're right. You're, Let's forget the whole what, little thing called slavery. Let's about just that. put that in a whole nother box and just pretend like that didn't happen. And let's just pretend like separate but equal that didn't happen. And let's just pretend like all those things. But I did better happen. then than they are today. In what? Under Everything. segregation? Academic, yeah. Families, academics, economics. They did education. They did better back then than they are today. To an extent, you are right that some things were better under segregation. And I'll tell you why. In segregation, right, before Brown versus the Board of Education, most people who looked like me and you went to schools and were taught well, by people look who white. looked like me and you. You don't look black. I, I'm so African people are going to be confused. No one's going to be confused. <laughs> <laughs> we, went to, we went to schools where we were taught by teachers who looked like us, who talked like us, who came from our communities. But what happened in Brown versus the Board of Education? It got rid of basically segregation, right? Because and unfortunately, what, what happened wanted. is, instead of integrating teachers, we integrated students. And that's we sent a student to wanted. a school to be taught by a teacher who is never prepared to teach that student, a teacher who thought that student was lesser than, and they were unprepared to do so. And you know what happened after that? When the 20 years after Brown versus the Board of Education, we lost half of the black teacher force. Let me ask, they should not have had forced integration? It should have been done differently. Should they have had forced integration? Yes, we should have had forced integration. But you said it wasn't a good idea. If black men and women were to get married, uh, raise their children in the right way to go, love was right with all their heart, soul, and might, yeah. uh, uh, created businesses which would create jobs in their own communities, uh, ran the black drug dealers and, and gang members out, would black people, two things, would they be blaming white people, and would they have a better chance for a better life? I'm not going to go with all the elements of what you suggested, but I will say this. Why if not we had more elements? black families that were intact, we would be, have a better society. And but would unfortunately, they be we blaming, don't have as many black families that are intact because we they, have a criminal and justice would they be system blaming that white, targets black men. Would they be blaming white people if the family was intact, bringing these values into the lives of their children, would they have a better life? I don't think people are blaming white people, they're blaming whiteness. Would they be blaming whiteness? If what? If, if, if they had family, businesses, well, why not I think push you, that? I think you assume that I don't believe, believe why those are Why not push important. that though? Why not those. push that? I do push that. But not, no, I, not. I'm an example of that. I, you're not pushing I have a that. job. Well, we were here to talk about education. No, I'm we, talking about the lack of preparation of our teachers. No, but you gave the impression that education is the best thing. I even asked it is. Who's you know why? Best, morality, you know why it's, you know you know why it's the best thing? You know why it's going to change the future? Because every single child in our country is socialized in the classroom. <laughs> And that's why we're taking the civil resistance to the classroom through our Black that's Minds amazing. Matter course. So if that's true, we just had a black lawyer in the White House, educated, a black man, half white, yeah. half black, went with his blackness. Well, he's black, and he ended just like up, me. He ended up becoming you. the worst, most hated, socialist, liberal, godless, weak president that this country has ever experienced. And he's educated. If education is the answer, see that's interesting. Why did you, he you, make would, you would better. see him and see that, and when I why see him, make, I no, see no, no. Why did he make inspiration. I see the hopes and dreams of the slaves. I see someone who tried to elevate <laughs> right. our community, and unfortunately, he was followed by someone who is not as kind, is not as thoughtful, who is, is not as deliberate. On our current president, President Trump. So you're not loving the great white hope, the great white hype, hope. Hype? You didn't vote for the president, President Trump? Absolutely not. My final question. Yeah. Did you have fun? I sure did. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. coming. Good to meet you. You too, buddy. We're from North California and South Alabama and little towns all around this land. And we can scan a buck and run a trot line and a country boy can survive. Country folks can survive Country boy can survive Country folks can survive Next time on The Fallen State
four countries now. I just got banned from my fourth country. Uh, Which one was that? A couple weeks ago. Canada. They take you to the airplane and make sure you get on. Sometimes they even ride with you and they give you back your passport once you're out of their country. <laughs> That's amazing. How do you get banned from an entire country? <laughs> I'm collecting country bands like some people are collecting Beanie Babies. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.